Live from Las Vegas, it's The Q, covering HPE Discover 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hi, everybody, welcome back to Las Vegas. My name is Dave Vellante, and this is day three of The Cube's live wall to wall coverage of Hewlett Packard Enterprise HPE Discover. This is The Cube, the leader in live tech coverage. We have a little reveal here. J.R. Fuller is here. He's the Global Business Development Manager for IoT Edgeline at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and he's joined by Doug Smith, who's the CEO of TechSmart. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having us. All right, lay it on us, Doug. What is TechSmart all about? We're going to have, like I say, a little virtual reveal here. That sure, our is and, not seen. and first of all, thanks for having me You're very welcome. here. And TechSmart Chemicals is a 50-year-old company located in Galena Park, Texas, which is right on the Houston Chip Channel outside of the, the city of Houston. We are a manufacturer of specialty chemicals, uh, one being DCPD, which stands for dicyclopenadiene. Um, we have been making significant capital investments in the physical plant um, over the last 20 years. And about two years ago, we realized we needed to move forward in a control system, a new control system initiative at the plant, as well as a, a baseline mechanical integrity uh, initiative. And so we're a small organization of 53 people and we looked to our contacts and got in touch with HPE and started a conversation. We don't have a normal client customer relationship. We have a partnership of people, HPE people, TechSmart people, so. Absolutely. So JR, pick it up from HPE side. So you guys have made a big push into this whole, whole IoT business and you yeah. need partners. Yeah, like that absolutely. Firm. So, so it's kind of interesting the way we, way we got started. Uh, you'll probably remember last year we had the big pump, the pump oh, yeah. demo, the FlowServe yeah, pump yeah, demo. That so, awesome. that, so that was, that was <laughs> a project of mine and Doug had heard about that from a mutual friend and uh, gracious, very gracious of him. He, he invited us to come out at Texmark and actually install that at his facility. And he said, I got this bug pond over there, you can put that in there, and then you have a production version of that, because we had the proof of concept version in our lab. And I said, that is really nice and very sweet, but no, let's figure out what we can do that will really benefit you, because that won't really benefit you. And that started a dialogue that's, it's been about a year we've been talking about this, and um, I think it was in August, I, I proposed to him and said, what do you think about doing a refinery of the future? And his words to me were, JR, I don't know what it is, but I love it. <laughs> and I said, well, let's figure out what it is for Texmark and, and let's go from there. And that's kind of how we, we started the genesis of this entire uh, journey of so what we're doing. You, so you kind of laid out the vision, which is the fantastic. Vision, right. And so that your North Star. And then just for the audience's benefit, you know, we weren't here at the Discover, there was this amazing uh, floor exhibit, and it was pumps and tubes and With pipes. machine and, learning and, yeah. And, all, it was, and it was all kinds of data that right. was flowing through there, and sort of, uh, I guess, a, a digital twin, if you will, exactly. uh, of, yep. of, the, of the factory floor. Uh, the refinery. Well, of a plant, yes. Yeah, a plant, and right. and that, uh, that's a great segue into Texmark and how we have synergy between our two organizations, is that Texmark, although a small, uh, chemical process facility, we have all the equipment that the huge companies have. We have boilers, we have pipes, we have distillation columns. And we need to move forward with our people to instrument, to gather data, to do data analytics on the edge, to have a connected uh, facility with Wi-Fi capabilities. So that's where the conversation started. So much of the data Maybe most of the data today, or historically anyway, is analog data, is that correct? Or? Um, it is a combination. Okay. So um, what, what we are doing, once again, we're a small organization. We have one IT person, and that person is, is contract. So how we are approaching it is Texmark stays in the chemical, we use the analogy of swim lanes, is <laughs> we are swimming towards profitability in the chemical business, HPE is swimming in the lane with uh, with all the technology, technology, and, the and then we're working together on this voyage of discovery out here that we're figuring out along the way. Yeah, and sh for sure, you're not IT, you're operations. Yes, sir. Right, and you guys yes, are IT. Exactly. And now, and and so talk more about the partnership. What what is that all about? And you, you people, 
it, it's totally about people. It's totally about people, and it's it's uh, interacting with with each we, with each other. It's showing up every day. It's working towards things. It's when you do run into a problem, and, and Doug's got a great a great story of when we had a when we had a problem. When you do run into a problem, you have the mutual goal of how to solve this problem together. In a typical you know, customer vendor relationship, there's there's some kind of built-in tension that's there. And you know, you're worried about, oh, the vendor's trying to do this to me, or oh, the customer's trying to get something from me. And we don't have any of that. We actually have a very solid partnership. And and occasionally, if one of my team or one of his team gets off uh, track on that, we bring them back to the fold and said, no, 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 we're, we're plowing road here. We need them to cut trees. We need us to cut trees. We, we all need to be heading in the same direction. You can't stop and go, how come this isn't paved? Because it's never been done before. And it's that shared objective of the refinery of the future that you're wor working towards. Right. So, can we describe in a little bit more detail the refinery of the future? Sure, sure. let me just jump in on that because uh, in this voyage of discovery with these conversations, um, we talked about what do we need to get the goals to achieve the goals that we want and so first there is the hardware component what do we need here to achieve these goals we'll just take the example of the pump the pump is the the heart of any process facility if you have a, a critical pump go down it can put you out of operation there's a cost associated with that and so what we need to do there's a cost associated with putting wiring from our control center to an actual pump if we can have a wireless network and a sensor on a pump, we eliminate the cost of physical wiring. So the wireless network was provided by one of our content partners, Aruba, and so that is installed. We are working to- You know those guys? I do. <laughs> he's I he's do. heard of them. <laughs> and so great. then we're talking about, well, what do we do with that data when it comes in? So we have two edge line servers in there and we have one in our control room and then we have one in it's super they have one here on the floor here at the uh the discover yeah the micro data center right, right. which is for our our place everybody's like oh it's, yeah. it's fantastic <laughs> so yes sir yeah. and and what that does and so we have the i'll just give you an example so we have our old uh system the old server over here size of a refrigerator and I use I have used this numerous times when explaining the project to people here at Discover is that I have to explain what we're doing to my 81 year old mother and when I say we have a, a refrigerator over there that used to run the plant and now we have this one little thing the size of <laughs> uh, you one know, year. a little tablet. <laughs> she goes, I, and it saves money and it increases efficiency. She gets that. So that those are some of the phases of the project. And I'll pass it over to Jr. because we've then identified how are we going to use this cool hardware to achieve objectives. Yeah. So, uh, so we, we when we look at the refinery future, we actually have a three phase project, right? So everything you you don't boil the ocean, you bring it down into the thing. So phase one for us was putting the Aruba Wi-Fi network out in the entire uh, refinery in the entire facility. So um, we've done that, and and because it's a petrochemical plant, it needs to go into a special enclosure. So uh, we have uh, we had a, a partner with Extronics out in the UK that creates this uh, protective enclosure. Like militarized. Yeah, 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 well, it's actually even beyond that. It is, Because okay. um, there's, in, in type one, div one environments, there is the potential for hazardous gas to be out in there. And so electronic equipment with sparking and things like that, and gas that can explode, not a good combination. So these div one boxes make it so that if there is an interaction with a spark and some flammable gas, and there's an explosion, it's contained within that box and not contaminates to the whole factory, which would, would plant. be that <laughs> plant, well, the, the whole plant, where it would actually create problems for, for everybody else. So that first phase was putting those uh, Div 1 compliant uh, Wi-Fi APs out there from Aruba. We're also uh, put in our beacons with our location-based services, uh, the Meridian system out there, so they can do wave finders, so they can get to the right pump to fix it. Um, and also uh, uh, their clear pass 
So putting ClearPass out there so it's a secured network, right? So we don't want anybody to be able to go in there and mess with anything. So the basic connectivity, the security to allow Ab that, all absolutely. that basic infrastructure to, so that was, to connect to the... Exactly, the, so that was phase one. So phase two was they, they had a, a rack of other people's compute in there, um, and we replaced all of that, like Doug had said, with two of our edge line EL4000 converged systems. Okay. And so, uh, one of those, we actually mounted on the control room floor, so right out on the edge, not in a data center environment, not in a te temperature controlled space per se, right? And uh, what we consider a data center. And then the other one, we actually did get an uh, HPE micro data center, and we put the other one in there. It's secured, it's uh, badge access, only, uh, only a couple people in Textmark have badge access to actually be able to get that. And when we look at the compute needs growing, that's where they're going to probably grow into is okay. that data. So set. phase two was bring the compute. <clears throat> so, so I call those two, phase one and phase two, my infrastructure phase, because mm -hmm. now I've got what I need to do. Now phase three is really interesting because that's where we're going to start doing IoT stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So there are five projects that we're doing on IoT. So the first one is predictive analytics. So this is both at the discrete and the process level. So when we talk about that pump that we saw last year, that's a discrete machine. We're doing predictive analytics on that machine. But that machine feeds a process. So how, how can we predict what's happening on this machine? What's the impact of that to this process? So that's the first one. Can I hop in yeah, for one for second? It. So JR is using the uh, example of the pump, and I mentioned the pump earlier being the heart of the organization. So it's been interesting being at Discover for the first time for me. And the way that I have been talking with people, you have people that are extremely interested in the human component and, and how is it affecting people. And then also there is the critical bottom line. How is it going to make me money and save me money? Mm -hmm, right. So this pump is an excellent example that addresses both of those. Mm -hmm. So if we have a pump fail, uh, there is a significant cost if it shuts us down for the day. So we're a seven acre facility and let's just throw a number out for easy math. Let's say it costs us $100,000 a day if that pump goes down. If you have a facility that's 100,000 times larger, just do, let me pull out my calculator and your math can tell you this solves a problem. From a human perspective, there's a, it's just like your heart stopping. There's a risk associated with that pump going down within the facility. Okay, so, so we're very tight on time. So you sorry. Got, so that's okay. So you got uh, you got the five phases or five IoT projects within right. phase three. Right. Predictive analytics. Predictive Let's run analytics. through them and we yeah, can. Yeah. Second one is video as a sensor. So this is cool. using using video to detect things that are going on and right. using the edge analytics to be able to power that. The third one is a safety and security. So these are things like man down, right? Directed response, those types of things. The fourth one is location is um, uh, connected worker. And I define this as location-based, context-aware content. So just very quickly, if you, have the, if you have three different people at the pump, one's an operations person, one's a maintenance person, one's a finance person, and they're all using that augmented reality that we saw, they're going to see three different dashboards. Location-based, context-aware content. And then the fifth one is we're going to tie into the two sister projects that are going on out there with the DCS upgrade and the uh, NEOS Palladio uh, Mechanical Integrity Program and do a full life cycle asset management. Okay, so, so these are big, big projects. So you now you've got the, 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 the fully instrumented refinery is kind of where you're at. Now you've got all this data flowing. <laughs> what happens to the data? Where does it, where does it get analyzed? Where does it, where does it end up? Where do you go from there? Sure, so um, the, of course having the edge line servers there, we're doing data analytics on the edge so we can have real time right there information to help our workers operate safely and efficiently. And then we have this wealth of historical data that we can start analyzing either on premise or off premise to get, to help us do our build, process build the models better. Of and things. then also this is one really cool aspect from a TechSmart perspective is we do a significant amount of toll processing. That means somebody comes to us and says, here, Dave, make this for us, and we will run it through our equipment and give them an end product. If we can improve the way we cook whatever, or process whatever it is that they want, there is a significant value added to that, so. And that historical data, that's Sorry. data lake, if you will, mm -hmm. 
lives on prem, it lives in the cloud, or you don't know yet? Or? Every, everything is on prem. Uh, the cloud applications that we'll probably use are around safety and security when we start talking about weather and humidity and wind direction and those types so of bringing things. Bringing in some outside response. data or, right, or but models that you yeah, apply. So, so Techsmark is a single facility, so leveraging the cloud to communicate to other locations and things like that isn't really a, a necessary driver, although it would be, completely would be, for some of the target customers that we want to sell this to but additionally. The, but the vast majority of the data is staying at the On-prem. Correct? Yep, okay. at, at the edge. It confirms the assumption that we've been making that mm -hmm. the 90% the of the data in this world is going to be, be analyzed at the edge, maybe you trickle some stuff back, some sure. nuggets back to the cloud, but right. guys, we got to go. This is a fascinating story. Thank so you so much. As you can Thank tell, you I could yammer up. a lot about this. <laughs> yeah, Thank you, Dave, stuff. I really right. appreciate our, it. Thank you, Dave. Our pleasure. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. It's theCUBE. We're live from HPE Discover in Las Vegas, 2017. We'll be right back. Thank you.